Hey, this is Steven, and this is an object tracking tutorial for Cinema 4D. This is one of a few tutorials that are sort of companion pieces to my Spooktober Models and Projects pack. The pack includes projects that I've set up in a way that can get you customizing your own scenes very quickly. There's a link to more information on that in the description. All right, so here's how you could put some of these spooky assets into your spooky footy. Motion tracking is pretty straightforward. I just want to kind of run through the principles here. I'm not going to go too in depth. There are definitely some more in depth and really useful tutorials out there if you just search Cinema 4D motion tracking and object tracking. But here's the gist of it. You want to go up here towards motion tracker and you're going to click on motion tracker and that'll give you this and uh, it'll come with this solved camera in here. And if you click on motion tracker, Inside the footage tab, you'll see this little section where it says footage, and it'll give you the option to uh, import your own footage. You can use a variety of different formats, but what Cinema 4D tends to like is image sequences. So if you can export an image sequence version of your clip, that would be a lot smoother. So that's what I did here is I imported it, and after I imported it, I went to 2D tracking. And over here in manual tracking is where you'll start inserting all of your track points. So all I did here was, see, all this was empty. This box had nothing in it. All these user 00 all the way through user 10, these are all track points, but it was empty before this. So what I did was I came over here and you can see, if I just click out of this so you can kind of see the footage as it was, my friend Cameron has all these track points that we put on his face. Now motion tracker, does best with a minimum of seven, I believe. I try to get anywhere between eight and 10 at least. So what do we have here? We have two, four, six, eight, 10, you know, 13 or 14 trackers. That's gonna be a good, you know, just do like 15 or so and that would be, you'd, you'd really get solid. What I did was clicking on the 2D tracking and going to manual tracking, you can hold control and click in certain places. So just as an example right now, I'm gonna click on the corner of his ear, holding control, I'm gonna click on the corner of his ear, and it adds a tracker. Now you'll see it's gonna put at the bottom of my list this new one, user number 11. So I'm just gonna delete that. And I put all of these trackers here. So that's, so zero is this one, zero one is this one, zero. And what you do when you place them, I'll show you on tracker number 10 because I haven't gotten to that one yet. This one's right here on the left side of his mouth, his left, our right. So if you go to the very first frame and you have it highlighted and you click on this track point and you click manual track, Cinema 4D is going to process this footage and it's gonna do its best job at tracking it for you. So what you have to do is you can use F and G to go back and forward a frame. F is back and G is forward and you could scrub through the footage to make sure it sticks. Now you can see already on the first frame it hops over here because all these track points look very similar. I should have used different colors or shapes or something. What we could do is just drag it over and the more you kind of force these points, the more it'll kind of paint its own picture and uh, track do a better track itself. So let's keep scrubbing. Um, Okay. Now when it starts to get to some of this really blurred out footage, it's up to you to sort of eyeball it. This is why when you're shooting footage that you know you're going to be tracking, it's usually a good idea to shoot with as high as a shutter speed um, as your project permits. This way you're doing less guesstimating and the automated tracking uh, can do its job a little better. Now when the box is red like this, that means it's not putting any keys down. So if you can't see your track point, it's actually better to not add a key here. You wanna leave it blank. So we'll just kind of move along and see if there's a bit, and there isn't any, more so we will just leave it there it'll stay red the rest of the time and so you do that for all of your trackers as many as you can and that'll get you a better track 
So I went through and tracked all of these points. Uh, if I select all of these and we kind of scrub this timeline, you can see how they all line up, but a few of them lose their track. And that's because at some points you're not going to be able to see your track mark. Um, so you either don't put it there or you meticulously figure out a way to sort of estimate where it would be. And that's why you want a lot more track marks. To supply Cinema 4D with more data is to get a cleaner track. And after each track mark is made, you're going to want to scrub through a couple times just to make sure that nothing got thrown off. So we're looking good here. And now we're on to our next step, which is to go over here to Motion Tracker, add an object tracker. And in Object Tracker, we want to put our track points into the assigned tracks. So in Motion Tracker, now we can select all of these, all of our track points, go back to Object Tracker, and click Assign Selected. So here are all our track points. Then you go over to Reconstruction and hit Run 3D Solver. Cinema 4D will do its thing. And now we should have a solve. So what you could do is create a new null, put it inside your object tracker, right click on your null, go to character tags, constraint, and then down here you want to go position scale rotation, you want to click that. Now in position scale rotation, in target, we're going to want to put our trackers. So user features, these are our trackers, okay? So position scale rotation, target, let's put our trackers in there, boom. If we click on this null, hit shift C to bring up our quick command, type reset PSR. If we click on our null, it should line up with his face. Now it rotates and moves with our track points. And what you could do for that is put anything you want to move in that space in this null. So for example, we could put a cube. Let's put the cube in the null. Click on the cube. Let's do reset PSR again. Now that cube is over there. And uh, let's scale it up. Okay, rotate. Let's kind of line it up to see where his head would be. All right, how does that look? Maybe a little more like this. Great. So now if we scrub through this, it's got a big old box head. And you know, you could fine tune that. It looks like it might need to be moved around like right there or so. Let's see how that plays. All right, so it looks pretty good. And with that, you could put a pumpkin on his head or a cauldron on his head or a chainsaw on his head. You could put a coffin on his hand and a chainsaw on his head. Whatever you do, be sure to send me what you make. You can either DM me or send me an email. You can find my contact information on my website.